Hi, my name is Ketan Majmadar. I'm a filmmaker, voiceover artist and actor. Now, this is a series that I'm starting off to follow a filmmaking journey of using Krotos Weaponizer as a Foley tool for short film development. Now, a lot of up and coming filmmakers are doing things on their own and quite often we can't get all the different components and different specialized uh, people within different sectors of post-production together and quite often we're doing you know multiple jobs on our own and hence why i've always thought um, i want to get involved with doing foley however from a director and a writer perspective there's a lot of work there already and I've always wanted to use Krotos's tools um, as a means of adding Foley and sound design to my films. I currently have a, a major short film that I worked on a couple of years ago, which has been shot and it's edited, which I did myself. And now I need to add the Foley and sound design layers. Now I'm coming in to using Krotos on a very beginner level. Uh, and using Weaponizer is it's a steep learning curve. So this video is going to show you how to get set up using Reaper and Cubase Pro. Um, I'll probably repeat the same uh, exercises um, with each different pieces of software so you can see the differences. Uh, but this is going to be the first piece, which is a look at setting up Reaper with Krotos Weaponizer and the journey will take you through a short film that I created with some friends uh, about a month or two ago. And uh, it is going to act as a understanding and a primer of a workflow. So let's get started. As you can see, I've got uh, a Reaper window here. Um, it's completely blank. It's empty. And... Um, just as an FYI, you don't need a MIDI keyboard, but in this uh, particular video, I am going to be using a MIDI keyboard. It's the Akai, it's the Akai MPK Mini 3. So, although you don't need one, I'm going to show you how to get a MIDI keyboard set up. The reason why I would probably advise getting a MIDI keyboard you want to make sure that your MIDI keyboard controller has got velocity control. Um, uh, let's say velocity control. It's like velocity sensitivity, which essentially means the harder you hit the key, the louder the MIDI note is. And in MIDI, there's 127 um, digits, uh, values uh, in the register for velocity. So the quietest it can be is zero, which is nothing. One is the very quietest uh, touch and one, two, seven will be a complete loud hit. So now that little technical lesson's out of the way. USB plug, it's already connected to my computer. Now that we got a MIDI keyboard set up, what we want to do is go into Reaper preferences. MIDI devices, and you'll see Akai MPK Mini 3 has been recognized. Now, I have plugged this in before. What you may notice is that when you turn on and um, go into your preferences, your MIDI devices under the audio section will show... Uh, well, it may show disabled to begin with which you then want to right click and select enable input. So now that you've enabled your MIDI device, what we're going to do is um, enable a track by double clicking in the left section to have a track. Now for short film production, um, Reaper's really good because you can import video, you can watch a video and you can export video. For using Weaponizer, you also need to have MIDI control and MIDI tracks. So along with the video, we'll see a workflow of how we might potentially set up a film project for working with Foley. This is just purely my on the fly process of, of making this work. So let's, um, let's dive into it. Um, 
obviously we're going to have a a video master track so i'm just going to label that as video and we we'll probably want to insert or drag and drop an item into it and we're going to go to this sweet tooth project and the latest one is version three there's a bunch of stuff in here so let's pull that together so now we've inserted this video um, by the way wherever your track is um, your pointer is that's where it's going to show and we want to go to view drop down menu and video and then we have a little video window um, now i don't want to taint what you see and what i work on with the sound and original sound of the video but i'm going to play just the very intro here so if we play here you'll see So you can see that there is some sound all there already, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of mute the video track. Hang on, let's just undo that. So I'm dragging down the volume to nothing. So, you know, if I click anywhere within the timeline, you can see different parts of the video. And we're going to jump to the beginning. It's just slightly off sync. Let's put that back. Right. Now we've got our video in the project. We play it back. We'll be able to hear it. Um, but ultimately what we are doing is we want to add Foley in. And the best way I found is doing a spotting session, figure out what group the sections, you know, I'm going to need footsteps here. So there we go. We might want to just say, let's create uh, a Foley section. And then um, we might create uh, a footsteps group. And I might want to drag that within um, that as a subsection. So every single bit of Foley will be controlled under one group in the mixer section of Reaper, which will be handy if you we've set everything, but you want to bring all the Foley up or bring it down in a mix at the final stage. So think a little bit ahead. So this hasn't got much to do with Weaponizer or Krotos at the moment, but we're going to get there. So obviously we're going to use our footsteps track for adding the footsteps in. So let's just add Weaponizer into the footsteps track as an effects section now um, there are other ways of adding the plugin where you could insert a virtual instrument on the track because reaper's seeing weaponize as a virtual instrument we are playing these virtual sounds and that's how it sees it the other manual way of doing it is by going into the effects section um, as you can see i've already it's already selected instruments and i've got a bunch of instruments already here but the vst weaponizer section is right there in the list brilliant so i select it click add and once the spinny wheel does its wonderful multicolored swirl we get weaponizer on our screen um, with some of the reaper ui section now we know we're, we're happy with this we don't want any more plugins or effects on this particular track we're just going to stay clean with um, weaponizer so let's close that window so we've now got the weaponizer ui this is the basic default setting and by default we have this single shot gunshot um, sample loaded in and um, what does that mean there's a lot of stuff going on on this screen so if we look at the sections we've got a library and a file section here we have a search box and a whole bunch of samples a lot of samples a ton of samples then we got this main body window here which has these these tabs are sample engines containing multiple bank slots to hold samples in 
The group of engines can be fired individually or as a single triggered sound or however this plugin wants to creatively be used. There are further configurations for how these react and respond but we'll look into that in future episodes. With the footstep presets, these engines are used to hold multiple samples within each engine inside a single bank. Some of the presets populate these engines called onset body thump and tail. Now the onset is like that precursor as to the main sound coming in. The body is the, the main bulk, the body, the body of the sound sample. The thump could be an additional um, follow on from that and the tail is the decay of that sample so because they've broken it up you can add certain types of effects to certain parts of the sample and what i think is interesting about weaponizer is that you have a whole host of different samples and it will randomize and take variations of them so whenever you trigger them you're never getting a single sample sound all the same which is what makes this plugin amazing so what do you see and hear if you hit this big red fire button? That's what you hear. Um, so just so that we can get some of the confusion out of the way, um, it's designed for rapid firing of samples as well as individual firing. So they have this burst mode. And if I hold my the button down, continuous. Um, we don't really need that for what we're doing yet. So it's nothing to do with footsteps. So uh, I'm going to take you through how we get to adding the footsteps for this first scene. So what we do is uh, I would probably take you through the moment of the film. this guy's already walking and he turns around and starts talking to the other character. So there's a little bit of shuffling, but pretty much it's that whole intro. We might want to have footsteps in the background, building up in volume up to the point where he arrives. So that's what we're going to do. In this particular video, I'm going to take you through setting up the footstep samples, having a quick look at that. And then I'm going to go to a project which same project, but, um, I've set a few things up and I'll walk you through that. So let's go back to the sample. Now you noticed in this library section, we have all these presets. You can load up a single file or a suite of files from your computer hard drive, but we don't need to do that. We're going to tap and click on Foley. Now we've just got these groups here and Luckily enough, Krotos have been very kind to us and given us a footstep section. So now we filtered from Foley to footsteps and we have got a whole bunch of samples here. Carpet, boots. Um, wow. There are a lot of samples. So leather shoes, running shoes, running shoes toe. This makes sense when you go back to this middle section and you maybe you just want to have a part of the sound sample and not the full sound sample. Given this character and what we know of it, they've probably got running shoes. So if I type in, in the search section running, I've now filtered and simplified what I need. Um, so we've got running shoes on metal, running shoes on hardwood, um, gravel, now, what do they sound like? The cool thing about these samples is that you can just um, click on a sample. These are all individual sound samples and they all merge together to create randomization when you trigger them. So this is a manual way of doing it, but Crotus have given us a little bit more to work with. So we can go to a factory preset we can go to footsteps and we can choose a type of shoe. So I'm pretty sure this guy's either got running shoes or trainers, let's say trainers, and he's on concrete. So trainers on concrete, tap that. This whole section changes for us and we have got samples loaded into the onset engine, samples into the body engine, samples in the thump engine, nothing in the tail.
because of the nature of the sample. So what does this preset sound like? Sounds like footsteps. Right, so we've now got a very convincing sound sample that we could use for our film for this particular character. We're gonna to need to perform our footsteps. Now, the MIDI keyboard will send MIDI signals to Weaponizer and when a certain key is struck along the timeline of our track, the sample will fire. One thing I haven't done is giving you a way of triggering these samples. So when you arm this track, you'll see you will probably be by default set to input mono stereo. You go to your input MIDI, select your keyboard controller, which you've set up within the Reaper preferences, or you can select a virtual MIDI keyboard. And if we were to say all channels on the virtual MIDI keyboard, what we would need to do would be to show it. And in the view section, we have a virtual MIDI keyboard, which shows here. Now, C4, you can see the MIDI signals firing in this section, but that's not doing anything. It's C5. That's triggering samples. C4, default center, um, would work for Cubase, and we'll run through that next time. C5, trigger. But you'll actually notice that these other keys are triggering some sounds as well. This is for the various individual banks. If we go back to Reaper, you'll see we have the onset body, thump and tail. These other keys outside of C5 will trigger a different sample. So C5 itself will trigger the entire sample if you've got four banks or, or four segments, um, all of them will trigger. If I do C sharp, just the onset will trigger. If I play D, just the body, E flat, thump, and E would be the tail if there was a tail. Um, so I'm gonna change this back to my keyboard controller and you can see samples the louder I click tap the key hit it the louder the sample the quieter the quieter the sample gives you some dynamic control right now I'm just going to give you an alternative way because this is a little fiddly if I wanted to bypass this whole manual setup you can insert as I said before on the track, a new virtual instrument. So let's do that. Go to weaponizer and add. I'm just gonna say no, just have a stereo output. We all want it on stereo. Although that will give you some more complex options if you want to route various samples on different channels. We're not going there right now. So now on this channel, it's remember the gun is what starts. You can see that's now triggering. Um, I'm going to disable that. And we haven't had to do anything with this input because it's looking for all MIDI inputs. And it's a bit easier by incorporating your virtual instrument and using Weaponizer through that. It's one step of setting up taken out of your hands and will always be there. Now, I can use either. You'll notice clicking on this goes to the full velocity hit. But with the keyboard, I have to give it the velocity in the way I, I fire it. This gives you a lot of control. Right, we have got Weaponizer set up. And if we were going from this option i would have created footsteps i would have added it in here and um it kind of doesn't really make a huge amount of difference which way you do it either way will work but let's just remove that track for the time being but yeah 
Let's go to all MIDI inputs. Anything MIDI will trigger this now. Back on the footsteps. And just to give you an idea of what would happen if I change the footsteps, um, let's do it manually this time. Go to Foley, footsteps, and mm, let's give it a boot. And the boots are in gravel. So let's do... Very different. Now these manual samples, by the way, won't work by just clicking on this. I'm now not going to have a full setup of gravel boots that I can control. So with the footsteps, we've got the gravel boot sample. Now if we take a look at the bank on the onset, we'll see we actually have full step 10, full step 11, full step 12, full step 13, full step 14 as all options within this bank, but I'm going to clear that. Now there's nothing in the body, but we still have um, we have the body and the thump, but that doesn't really give us any definition. So I'm going to clear the heel's going to go and the thump, which is going to be the toe. There are no samples triggering anymore. So I would need to go grass boots heel, let's say three. Now both of those are triggering. And then with the thump, I want the toe. Grass boot, heel, toe. Now I could... You can see there's some dynamic differences. So, you know, maybe we want a quieter toe. Let's throw that in there. That's an interesting sound. Uh, but again, we could just go to the footsteps, boots, gravel, click this, preset. And you'll notice the sample changing every time we trigger it and which sample is firing for that particular onset. Again, the heels randomize and the boots are randomized. I'm just touching the surface here. There is a lot more you can do with all of these controls, but it gives you an idea of how you could trigger from MIDI specific sounds. There are hundreds of sounds available, or you can make your own and then include them. If you say you had created three footsteps, three heel sounds, three toe sounds, you could create a, a huge variety of variation from just those small samples that you loaded into Weaponizer. So in the next episode, I'm going to run through how I set up the Reaper project and how I prep for triggering my footsteps and how I'm going to run through this short film. The particular film is four minutes long. There are a bunch of footsteps, but there are other Foley sounds. By the end of this series, we'll have created the whole Foley layer using Weaponizer. And in future episodes, we're going to be talking about Reformer Pro and how we can create custom sounds and dynamics with that as well. Thanks for watching and tune in next time. Thanks. If you could like, subscribe or follow, as usual, that would be great. I'm on Patreon, YouTube, Instagram, all those social channels. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.